ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the launching of a new era in the Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky's immersive, hands-on, educational experience history. My name is Sandy Kurd, and I will be your master of ceremonies this evening. Will you please join me in welcoming STEAM Team alumnus, Ms. Tylan Collins, to open our program with prayer. Please bow your heads. O oh God, who made the universe and all that is in it, we thank you for the skills and talents that enables us to explore the mysteries of creation. Give us the will to cherish all that you have made and to use the riches of our own world for the good of all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance led by a devoted Challenger Learning Center fan and future science major, Miss Winnie Bush. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kicking off tonight's momentous launch is the Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky's board vice chairman and longtime supporter. Will you join me in welcoming Mr. Jonathan Collins? Thank you, Sandy. I'm so pleased to see each and every one of you here this evening as we launch a new era in immersive learning for the students of Eastern Kentucky. We've just seen two of our STEAM team. For those of you not in education, STEAM stands for science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. In today's digital economy, it is vital that our students continue to receive the best in STEAM education. I've been privileged to be one of many dedicated community members from across our region serving on the Challenger Center's board of directors. These individuals graciously donate their time and their talents, and we couldn't be more grateful. If you're currently serving or have previously served on the Center's board of directors, would you please stand at this time and be recognized? I would also like to acknowledge an individual who continues to be a tremendous supporter of the Challenger Learning Center, and that is the president of this Hazard Community and Technical College, Dr. Jennifer Linden. HCTC has been a long-standing supporter of the Challenger Center, dating back to its creation in 1996. Please allow me to draw your attention to several easels with proclamations from Mayor Mabalini from the City of Hazard, Judge Alexander from Perry County Fiscal Court, Representative Chris Fugit uh, from the Kentucky House of Representatives, uh, Senator Brandon Smith from the Kentucky Senate. The board would like to thank our state and local government representatives for their continued support of our educational mission. During the next few minutes, you will hear from many others about how the trajectory of our students' lives are directly impacted by what is behind these doors. Again, on behalf of the center and its board, I welcome you to those who are here in person and to those of us watching, or those of you watching on our live stream. Thank you for your support and your willingness to help our children. And now, please move your attention to our video screens for a message from Dr. Lance Bush, Executive Director of the National Office of the Challenger Learning Centers. Hello, Eastern Kentucky. I bring you greetings from Challenger Center headquarters here in Washington, D.C. For more than 35 years, we've been carrying forward the legacy of the incredible Challenger crew. During the past three plus decades, we've inspired more than 5.5 million students at our Challenger Learning Centers across the globe. 
22 years ago, we were thrilled to open our very first Rural Challenger Learning Center in Eastern Kentucky. Rural Appalachian students have a historic role in space travel. Our local connections date back to the Rocket Boys of West Virginia and John Goodlett from Hazard, who served as a chief engineer for Viking that landed on Mars. Science has never been more important to our world than it is today. We need to instill a passion and interest in science within our students. We have tremendous challenges presented in climate, public health, and information technology. A future in space continues to grow with our space station, plans for an installation on the moon, and sending Americans to Mars. I am honored to be included in your launch this evening and stand alongside your board with the strong desire and passion to ensure your center continues to serve the students of Eastern Kentucky well into the future. Thank you, Dr. Bush. I know you are watching on live stream. Now, will you join me in welcoming to the podium the Challenger Learning Center's Executive Director, Mr. Tom Cravens. Hello, everyone. I, too, would like to thank each of you for joining us this evening, including those watching on the live stream. Our announcement tonight is about providing a path forward for our center and securing our future for the upcoming years and the next 100,000 or 150,000 students that will participate in our programs. In addition to our announcement tonight, you will have the opportunity to also take a sneak peek at the work we've been doing to upgrade the center over the past several months. We were very fortunate to obtain an Appalachian Regional Commission grant to upgrade our old Mars Invasion from Cold Camp to Space Camp program, which was very good to us over the last 13 years. Our new program will be called Moon, Mars, and Beyond. We will be following the Artemis missions to return to the moon. All of you know what, uh, how that, uh, the Apollo missions inspired a whole generation of students to pursue math, science, and technology. We feel that the Artemis missions will do the same. We also received very generous investment from Mr. Stan Pigman to upgrade our simulated mission program to include new, a new software platform and to make cosmetic improvements to our mission control space station and our briefing room. If you've been familiar with our program in the past, when you take your tour this evening, which I know you all will, you will see that we have made many, many changes. One of the great things about this upgrade is that we have also used mostly 100% local talent to do this. I'd like to recognize an important partner that we've had through this pro process, and that is Kentucky River Community Cares Horizon Media Group. That's led by Mr. Charles Boggs, who's standing back there in the back. And as, as you do your tour today, you will see several of the projects inside that were created by the Horizon Group here in Hazard. And we appreciate Charles and his team's uh, participation in our program. Uh, our Challenger staff also has been working night and day on this upgrade, and I'm not lying about that. And we're doing much of the manual labor ourselves, as in doing the painting, pulling the data cable, installing exhibits, or putting in the speaker systems. Everything we're pretty much doing on our own. Would our Challenger staff please stand and allow this group to thank you tonight. And that includes Mr. Fixit, Doug, uh, right, Doug Bryan over there, who um, uh, was not under the tent. We've even brought back John Hanshu, our very first flight director we, um, that we hired 
uh, who worked with us, with us for 13 years to help us. Uh, do we have any uh, former Challenger employees here? I didn't see any, uh, everyone. Amanda is back here. Uh, we had invited some other uh, past Challenger employees. Uh, so thank you for coming tonight, Amanda. Uh, I also want you to know that this project is not yet complete and that we still have many improvements yet to come, especially for the Moon, Mars, and Beyond exhibit. We'll supply you some information during your tour tonight that will hopefully give you a picture of what is yet to come. With these new changes, we will be, re be reopening the center after COVID as almost a completely new Challenger Center, one with new and improved simulated missions and a one-of-a-kind interactive exhibit in Moon, Mars, and Beyond. But this evening is not entirely about staff, board, or the building here. This evening is about changing lives of our most precious resource, our children. You know, it's not a common thing to have a center like the Challenger Center located in a small rural area. We all know that many, many of our young people in this region have fewer opportunities and are exposed to fewer life-changing experiences that children in other areas receive. This center allows them to see themselves in a different light. After they launch a probe that successfully re relays information back to Earth or after they design, build, and program a robot to successfully complete a task, these experiences make them think bigger and dream bigger dreams. We know the Challenger Center makes a huge impact on the lives of young people who participate in our program because they tell us about it. We have a short video here that you can hear some of their stories and what they have had to say about the Challenger Center. Walking through the doors of the Challenger Center the first time, it was like a gust of wind hits me. And you know, you look up and you just see so many cool things as a kid. And you see an astronaut suit that's that's instantly gets you hooked. You know, you, you take a walk through the interactive science center and you know you see all these cool exhibits and you really get a hands-on experience with science at such an early age that it just sparks that drive, you know. Why does this do this? Why why does that do that? You just can't help yourself but to really start going to every single thing you can and at the end of the day you know I remember not wanting to leave at all especially coming into mission control uh, I was part of the comms team I, I remember it vividly just how cool it was being a part of a team working together on that common goal I would absolutely recommend the Challenger Center to parents teachers and I would even recommend that they open it up to high school students more uh, this had such an influence on my career decisions and uh, it just opened up an entire new world for me and like I mentioned before we don't really have many I guess aerospace companies in the mountains or around Pikeville or Hazard or Eastern Kentucky so I think it's a great way for a lot of our really bright students to be exposed to something that they may not have thought about before. My experience at the Challenger Center definitely planted the seed for me to become an engineering major. I was already really interested in math and science, but the Challenger Center helped me see what it could be from a day-to-day -day basis. It helped me get some type of real experience as to what I could potentially do with an engineering degree. Because NASA does hire a lot of engineers and that helped that that thought was planted in my head and for the longest time I thought I'm gonna be an aeronautical engineering major and I'm gonna go work for NASA the tables turned a little bit and I ended up becoming a chemical engineering major because I really enjoy chemistry but without the Challenger experience I don't think I would have had the same type of thought process and thought path that I ended up having about the Challenger Learning Center's collaborative role with our school systems is the Chairman Emeritus of the Challenger Learning Center, Dr. Ed Hughes. Thank 
Thank you very much. You know, 25 years ago, Alice Noble, who was a retired Hazard High School teacher, brought to our community the idea of a Challenger Learning Center. Her idea was shared in a large group meeting that was held at Hazard City Hall, hosted by Mayor Bill Gorman. Well, the people were really enthusiastic, and they were just overflowing with, can we get one of these? Can we get one of these? And the next morning, Mayor Gorman called me into his office, and if you'd ever been called into Mayor Gorman's office, you got to sit down, and he put his arm around you, and that meant, uh-oh, there was a new task to be, to be had. He asked if the college would lead an effort to bring such a center to the eastern Kentucky mountains, not just to Hazard, but to the eastern Kentucky region. And Judy Mitchell, who was a staff, a senior staff member at the time, on my staff here at the college, wrote the application. And as I recall, we had five civic groups, each pledged or gave $1,000 so that we had our $5,000 fee to go with this application. Um, my recollection is it was the Hazard Lions Club, the Rotary, uh, I believe the Chamber of Commerce, the college's uh, foundation, and of course the city of Hazard. I just want to pause, and I don't know if Judy's here, but if you're here, Judy, uh, or if you're, if you're on, if you're live streaming, I just want to recognize you and thank you for creating that application that was successful and for continuing to support this center as a member of the board of directors. So please give her a round of applause. Very special lady. And, and, and I also want to thank the many members of the board over the years who uh, provided their time and their talents and their treasure. Uh, and some, some difficult times and some not so difficult times. Uh, without them, all that collective group and, current, and certainly the current board, this center simply would not have existed. I think it's really important to note that this was a regional effort from the very beginning. It was always community-based. Uh, it turned out to be a starship for the kids of Eastern Kentucky, but it was always to be an Eastern Kentucky collaboration. We simply, back then, insisted that our teachers and our kids deserved the same kind of advantage of other places that had a Challenger Learning Center, and they were all in urban areas. And we wanted it to be done right here, Governor Patton, right in Eastern Kentucky. We also knew, as one of the students alluded to, that it, we couldn't wait till our students got into college so that they would understand the importance of science and technology and math and these technology-based careers that we're developing. We had to excite them. We had to excite them when they were young. We had to provide them with memorable experiences that impacted their futures, as that young man said. So when we got word from the Challenger Center that our application had been approved, we were one of five that year, all the rest of them in major cities. One major city was Phoenix, Arizona, folks. And Hazard, Kentucky, Eastern Kentucky was one of those four. Well, we had to start searching. Who's going to lead this? It didn't take us very long to find on our board a gentleman by the name of Tom Cravens. And Tom, it's absolutely impossible for me or all of us to adequately thank you for your devotion, your determination, and your innovative leadership of this center. It continues to be inspirational to all of us, Tom. And I think we should thank him enthusiastically. <laughs> you know, and kudos to the, uh, the, the staff over the years that every day made magic happen in this, in this center. And as I said, friends, this has always been about the region's kids, always. Never was about the center, it was about the kids and what could happen when they came to the center and participated in center's programs. That's why we did collaborate initially with 16 school superintendents. Those 16, each of them committed to send their entire sixth grade classes 
to the center and participate in programs. Other schools over the years joined, and I don't know whether it's 150,000 or 170,000 or over 200,000. Teachers, students, and their families and community members have benefited from this center and its programs. And we owe a huge debt of thanks to a group of unknown heroes. They were teachers that we brought together under the leadership of Abby Combs to actually create the first curriculum. We had, we had a center full of equipment. We needed a curriculum that matched what was going on in sixth grade. Those teachers came together and created that very first curriculum for the kids in the region. And folks, there's a new group of students, the teachers, that are doing the same things for the students in the future. Uh, this group is led by Katrina Sloan, Dr. Sloan, at Alice Lloyd College. And they're building the curriculum that meets all the educational standards in Kentucky for the Moon uh, and Mars mission. And I want to say a personal thanks, one president to the other, Dr. Linden, for your support of this center during difficult times. It is during difficult times when you know who you can count on. And this center has counted on Dr. Linden and her leadership to get us through some tough times, both the college tough times and the, and the center's tough times. And I want to thank you again. I'm biased, folks. I'm very biased about this. But I think the partnership that's so unique with Hazard Community Technical College and the Challenger Learning Center is probably the most impactful partnership you have. And it may well be the most impactful one the Kentucky Community and Technical College system has. I know I'm biased, but I truly believe that. You know, it's taken a big village over 25 years, big village, uh, to make this happen. I've noted uh, Mayor Gorman's vision, but I have to celebrate with you again tonight the million-dollar gift that Buggy Clemens, who this building is named after, provided um, that helped us get through the first couple of years. And I have to celebrate Leon Holland and Julie Aikman, who brought that pledge to reality. And Governor Patton was instrumental in providing leadership that helped us get an Appalachian Regional Commission grant for $750,000. That allowed us to buy all the equipment and have it installed by professionals. We didn't ask Tom to do that for that time. <laughs> And Congressman Rogers joined in the fund. He was able to help secure a $1.4 million grant from the U.S. Department of Education that really helped fund the faculty, the staff, and the expenditures during those first three years. And I'll just say over the years, fundings come from large contributions and small, from individuals, foundations, businesses, the Clemens Endowment, school fees. It's been a big, big village that has allowed this thing to happen. And you're going to learn a little bit more about the future and the ability that we think is in this region that will help us secure that future. But tonight, tonight it's, it's all about the kids. It's always been about, but it really is about the kids. Inspiring them to explore beyond their environments, launching them, launching them into STEAM careers, changing the trajectory of their lives. And thanks to many people, we're well on our way to securing that future. You know, I've done a lot of things in my life. I was a founding president of a community college. It's pretty rare these days. This center has been the most important, impactful thing I've ever been associated with in my life. It has impacted more students. And so, yeah, I am a little biased, folks. I take a little time talking about the center. 
You know, and I'm grateful to have been part of its past, but I want to tell you, I'm over the moon and I'm headed to Mars <laughs> to be part of its future. Let me leave you with this true story. Early in the center's operation, one of the teachers in the region asked her own sixth grade student at the end of the day, like we parents do, how was your day? Well, the student excitedly said, Mom, today has been the best day of my life. I got to go to the Challenger Learning Center. Think about that. There are many more students in this region whose best days may be shaped by this center and its programs. So I'm going to ask you one more time out there in the streaming land world and here. Join me and this great big village in securing the future of the Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky for the future of our kids. I've got my commander's jacket on. And by the way, Tom, it's the only thing you did, did wrong. He got me a double X. <laughs> I never was quite that big. Join me, folks, in the future of our kids from eastern Kentucky. And as Spock says, may we live long and prosper. Thank you. Amazing. And folks, it's not like we're just inspiring students and releasing them into the universe. No, we are part of a pipeline to allow students to fulfill the careers of their dreams. To share that perspective are Dr. Benjamin Malforus, Dr. Pamela Clark, and Dr. Carol Christian from Moorhead University. On the screens. Hello from the Space Science Center at beautiful Moorhead, Kentucky. Moorhead State University's Space Science Center is the home of a number of academic programs and research and development in small satellites. Uh, we are very happy to be part of the big event for the Challenger Center of Kentucky. I'd like to introduce my colleagues, Dr. Carol Christian here who is the director of the Craft Academy at Moorhead State University and Dr. Pamela Clark here who is the director of the Star Theater at Moorhead State University and we're extremely excited to be part of your big night. The Space Science Center at Moorhead State University is a research and development center in small satellite technologies and space mission operations. We also offer academic programs that are unique uh, we offer undergraduate degree programs in uh, space systems engineering and also astrophysics and a master's program in space systems engineering. They're really the space side of aerospace engineering. They're aerospace programs but focus on space systems uh, engineering. Uh, we have been a huge uh, partner and fan of the Challenger Center of Kentucky from the very beginning. Many of our students that matriculate through our programs have been inspired to go into STEM careers by activities at the, at the Challenger Center. Uh, the, some of the outreach programs, the, um, the mission simulation uh, activities that the Challenger Center puts on, uh, the simulated space missions with the Mission Operations Center that's very much like the Johnson Space Center are just extraordinary and inspiring. And many of our students have uh, been inspired to come to Moorhead State because of that program. This is Dr. Pamela Clark. I'm the director of the Star Theater here in the Space Science Center. And we are very happy to be part of the big event for the Challenger Center of Kentucky. In fact, I think we have many goals in common. We ourselves just had a big event as well, our grand opening after being closed for over a year and a half, which included an upgrade. And we are very interested in STEAM as well. We had people from the Traditional Music Center and the art community here, as well as people who wanted to see the shows. And our plan for this year is to basically increase the number of public shows. We've also had a, a lot of people who want to come back to the Star Theater. And uh, we have um, material, we have brand new shows that we didn't have uh, last year. And uh, we also tell people a little bit about the Space Science Center and give them a tour when they're here. So, we're, and we, my, I have students who are part of the crew who actually have been in Challenger Center programs, and they are wonderful. I'm very happy to be part of the big event for you guys. 
The Craft Academy at Moorhead State University is proud to partner with the Challenger Learning Center in, of Kentucky, and we look forward in the next 22 years. Together, we promote STEAM education in Eastern Kentucky, and we share the goal of inspiring students to be the next generation of STEM leaders in our state and our nation. We look forward in the continued partnership with the Challenger Learning Center as we develop more robust summer programs for students in rural Appalachia. Who knows who passes through the programs offered through the Challenger Learning Center, the Craft Academy at Moorhead, and Moorhead State University. It could be the next astronaut, an engineer, a flight technician, a scientist that sends the next exomedicine experiment into space. Our tagline at Craft Academy is Imagine, Invent, and Impact Kentucky and Beyond. We share that goal with the Challenger Learning Center and the beyond just might be in space. We are really excited to be part of your big night. It's been uh, a phenomenal event. Uh, I can't wait to get to the Challenger Center myself and see the uh, Moon, Mars, and Beyond program. And we are extremely excited to continue our long-term partnership, uh, both Dr. Kristen and Dr. Clark and I, with the Challenger Center of Kentucky. have one more testimony and that is from the perspective of someone who sits beside students and witnesses that moment when light bulbs go off and understanding takes place. This person is called a teacher. Join me in welcoming Rhonda Wagers. Good evening everyone. I feel so honored to get to speak with you tonight. As a teacher for the past 27 years, I must say that I've never missed an opportunity to bring my students to visit the Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky. For many years, this facility has offered numerous high quality programs that have greatly enhanced student learning in the areas of STEAM education, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, all while staying within the current state curriculum guidelines. As educators, we are tasked with motivating our students to persevere through rigorous courses of math, science, and many others. So often students struggle to find the relevance of these programs and courses. We try to assure them that these things will be worthwhile in their future and that there are a vast number of careers just waiting for them at the end of their efforts. But guys, they need more than that. They need to be exposed to actual real world models to be able to make those important connections. Excuse me. The Challenger Learning Center trips have always provided that moment where my students have looked at me and said, aha, uh -huh. it has been the most productive and favored field trip that my students and I have ever been a part of. If you could speak to one of them today, they would no doubt tell you that. For the past several years, I've heard them say to me, yay, we get to go to the Challenger Learning Center this year, or I've been so excited to finally get to your class because you're the teacher that takes us to the Challenger Center. You see, there are so much more ways of learning effectively when put, students are put into role models that appeal to them. They have so much fun doing the hands-on activities at the center that they don't even realize they're learning. It seems most people are also intrigued by the unknown aspects of the real world. So what better way to grab someone's attention than to use the topic of space? Take this scenario, for example. School-age students have opportunities to participate in several Challenger Center programs where they visit the space station or the museum. At school, they prepare for their trip to the center. Then after they arrive, they are presented with a mission to accomplish. Then they're put into a pretend quest to find a comet or go to Mars. Imagine that. They must work together in separate environments to perform hands-on experiments and solve problems. They communicate with one another using real-life technology such as video links, emails, intercoms, mics, and headsets. They use many skills to do this, such as reading, following directions, typing messages, and of course, math and research to find answers. A big favorite of the kids has always been to build a probe in the space station with the help of the team from Mission Control. Then everyone gets to be a part in launching that probe into a comet or into a crater to study data. I have loved seeing that look in their eyes when they finally made that connection between the classroom and the real world. 
They now realize why subjects such as math are so important because they have been tasked with finding out many important life-sustaining concepts such as the percentage of oxygen or humidity in the space station. I felt that adrenaline rush right along with them for many, many years. I have observed them finally realizing the importance of how their studies can lead to future careers. Folks, that's a mighty big dividend for a field trip. The curriculum now here has expanded over the years to also include STEAM programming for ages 6 through 18. Some ways they offer these are through in-school outreach programs, virtual programming, family engagement, and summer camps. One of their newest offerings is a paid internship for high school students known as STEAM Team. They are mentored through opportunities of leadership development and community service activities. The Challenger Center is also known for sponsoring the region's first Lego League robotics competition. They currently are going through some program upgrades here to make this experience as much more spectacular. You will see some of these tonight as you tour the center. I really appreciate the opportunity to have been able to share some of my experiences with you. Please have a wonderful evening and, and enjoy your visit to the Challenger Center. I'm sure you will. Thank you. That is a huge dividend for a field trip. Wow. Now, if you will join me in welcoming to the stage the chairwoman of the Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky's capital campaign, Ms. Janice Bradford. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. You know, what can I say that hasn't already been said? Uh, a couple of years ago, I was approached approached and asked if I would serve as the, as the chairperson for this capital campaign, which is the first that the center ha has had in its 22 years of service. I've always been a fan. In fact, it was one of the first places that I visited when I came to Hazard 20 years ago. Uh, I've always been a fan and what a treasure we have here in Eastern Kentucky. I served as a, as a board member for several years so I spent time at the center and got acquainted with the staff. And yeah, we can't say good, good enough things about Tom. He's all about the kids. He loved, <laughs> loves the children. And what can we do? And if you want to have an exciting experience, come to the center when the students are there. I've been fortunate to be there a couple of times. And there's so much excitement. These kids can just hardly contain themselves. And I was here about a year or so ago when Governor Patton came, and he talked to the students, and you could hear a pin drop. They were, <clears throat> they were so attentive and so, so very well behaved. Um, this center, again, is about the children, flying missions. Um, I'll admit that in leadership East Kentucky, I came here and got to fly a mission. And it was not easy for me. I mean, <laughs> it, in fact, I kind of struggled along with it. So it's not anything easy, and it's something that the children do have to prepare for before they come to do the mission. Uh, I just want to stress that we do have an, an outstanding board. We have about 30 members, diverse members, and all of them have committed and have contributed to this campaign. The purpose of this campaign is to raise money for the students to keep this wonderful treasure that we have here going to help the students and, and continue to impact their lives. The, um, and yes, I have to stress this again, over 50 school districts and over 150,000 students have walked through these doors and their lives have, have been touched and their lives have been changed. This past two years, we've been in the silent phase of our campaign, and uh, we've done, done well. We're going to announce that in just a few minutes, and tonight we're gonna, going to announce uh, the public phase of the campaign. So I guess with, with everything else, else that has been said, there's someone here that's very special, our special guest, and uh, who was, as Dr. Hughes and others have mentioned, he was largely responsible for getting the the center here in Hazard, and he's been a big fan and a big supporter of the, the whole 22 years uh, that it, in, it, in its existence. So, 
from the coal mines to Pike Physical Court to the Governor's Mansion and the University of uh, Pikeville, please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker and very special guest, Governor Paul Patton. Thank you, Janice, and, and thank you all for uh, getting together tonight and celebrating and committing to support a very important community function. You know, I was enthralled and intrigued when Dr. Hughes and his group came in Frankfurt and talked to me and explained to me about this concept and the opportunity to get one in rural Kentucky. At that time, there was not one in a rural community anywhere in the United States. And I believe Ed, there was about 30 or so in the United States at that time, somewhere in that range. And uh, I said, you know, that's what we've been looking for. We need something that people could come to Eastern Kentucky and get and see that's no place else in Kentucky. And that's what this facility was, and that's what it is. And, you know, there was another thing. Uh, uh, over at Prestonburg, a, a group came and talked to us about the, uh, the, the center over there, the uh, telescope and all that stuff. And so I said, look, if we've got that in Prestonburg and we've got that in Hazard, then that would be a reason for people from Lexington and further bring their children up here and see something that we have that they don't have. And certainly it was a, it was a pleasure to do that. I'm proud, like Ed Hughes, I'm proud to have at least had a part in starting this center. But I'm not the one that did it. It is your center. Not necessarily, even though Perry County and Password have provided the bulk of the support and leadership, this is an Eastern Kentucky facility, just like the one over Prestonburg is an Eastern Kentucky facility. And it deserves the support of people all over Eastern Kentucky. And I'm going to send, I want to send that message out tonight that people all over Eastern Kentucky need to support this center. And, and, I, and I have and will continue to because it gives our children an opportunity to look beyond their self, to begin to understand just how big the world is, to begin to understand just how important a part they could play in it. You know, I, I, I graduated from Eastern Kentucky, from Louisa. I went to the University of Kentucky, and I, was am I am amazed at how little I knew about the world. Well, that's before television. That was before we have all this stuff today. But the world is big. The opportunities are unlimited. And people from Eastern Kentucky can do that just as good as people from any place else. And this center is the core of the way we project that opportunity to our young people in Eastern Kentucky. It's up to you, it's your center. You know, Senator, uh, governors can proclaim and legislators can enact, but it takes boots on the ground to do the job. And that's what this community has provided is boots on the ground. The leadership of, of Ed Hughes, while he was president here, made sure that it got started and it survived those, those treacherous early years of, of any infant would have to go through. They need the support, and Ed gave, them, gave this organization that. And the dedication of Tom Cravens is phenomenal. Phenomenal that he has seen the importance of this and committed his life to this. Few, few people would commit to a community endeavor to the extent that Tom Cravens has. And uh, I, I want to I I give Tom another compliment. <laughs> I think I can say without fear of contradiction, that without Tom Cravens and his dedication, this facility would not have survived. Because um, even though the fact of the matter is that the state ought to continue to provide support for this facility and for the one at Prestonburg, 
Sometimes it's hard, it's hard to, to get that to happen. And it's been really tough. And so uh, it's up to us. It's up to us. Me and you and people in Pike County and Perry County and Leslie County and McGoffin County and Bussey County and all of the Eastern Kentucky that wants to take pride in something that is unique. Uh, it's up to us to make sure that it survives. It'll be a constant struggle. It's not over. It's not a struggle. It's not over. Even when this capital campaign is over, the struggle is not over. It'll be there. And it's up to us, the people of eastern Kentucky, not just Perry County, the people of eastern Kentucky, Pike County, Floyd County, Martin County, all of these counties and the people, the leaders that want to see eastern Kentucky grow and survive and prosper, as I do, it's up to them to recognize this unique opportunity and provide the financial support that it's going to continue to take to make sure that this facility continues to provide opportunities to the children for the next 22 years and the next 200,000 children and beyond, just like they have for the last 22 years and, and the 150,000 or so students that have already benefited from this program. So uh, thank you all for inviting me over here tonight. Uh, I hope you'll invite me back again and uh, let us all get together to make sure that this facility continues to be here long after we have departed this earth. Thank you. God bless you. of the Challenger Center staff and the Board of Directors, we have a special gift for our special guest. Oh, okay. And you can go ahead and, and open it right now if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> is this an extra large egg? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is. A, it says Commander. Uh, you say Commander? Okay. <laughs> I will value this and wear it. Thank okay. you all okay. very much. Well, will you hang, hang up here? We have an announcement to make. We want to uh, we want to share uh, the amount of money that we've raised during the silent phase of our campaign. And this gentleman again has helped us tremendously uh, in raising these funds. We have now raised one million one million nine hundred one million nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars. One million almost two million. And, and so go ahead and roll the film. We're going to tell you what our, what our goal is for the public uh, phase of this campaign. Our goal is to raise $2,250,000. So roll the, roll the, Kentucky is now launching its public capital campaign and I encourage you to cover your ears right now because we're about to set off some cannons in support. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Folks, the center invites you inside to have the first preview of Moon, Mars, and Beyond exhibit. Peruse the renovative Mission Control and Space Center. See an actual wheel from a real-life Mars rover. You're invited to wander around and explore just like the space explorers that we celebrate. Staff are wearing bright lanyards and would love to tell you more. For those of you wanting to join our public campaign this evening, 
We have pledge cards and a donation box and even a digital portal for making those tax-deductible donations. Inside, we have for you a hospitality gift, some excellent food from Big Blue. And get excited about this. In 10 minutes, our own STEAM team alumnus, Jody Cottle, is making astronaut ice cream with liquid nitrogen, a must-see demonstration. Our gift shop is also open to take something back home to the kids. The Challenger Learning Center thanks the Hazard Community and Technical College for allowing us to launch our public campaign here tonight. Let us respect their policy to engage in social distancing and to wear your mask when you're not dining. Thank you, thank you for supporting our children's future.